Good morning. I, I feel like I need pheromones. Hold on a second. Good morning. <laughs> I feel like I needed some, um, like I wanted some, wanted this, so this is a spray that I have from Bedroom Candy. Um, Yes, I'm a bedroom candy consultant, uh, but I love the way it smells. I use, I like use it like for breeze in my room, and I was like, I want to, I want to smell that today. So, da -da -da -da. It has pheromones in it. It smells sexy. Like it really does turn me on. Um, good morning. Happy Sunday. I hope everyone is doing well. I was up reading uh, Mary Magdalene Revealed by Megan Waters Watterson. It's a great book if you haven't read it. I highly recommend it. Juice isn't. And, um, you know, I was thinking about Tantra and I was thinking about sacred sexuality. And in reading it, I was kind of thinking about the, like, and, and so, in Taoism, there, it, it, and Tantra too, but I've, I, I see it more clearly in Taoism. Taoism is another form of sacred sexuality, by the way, in which there is the, the merging of the ego and, and the soul. Really, that's all, of, that's all of sacred sexuality, by the way, um, is the merging of the ego and the soul. I should not have kept this sweatshirt on because now I'm hot. Wait, let me show you guys the sweatshirt. Okay, hold on, so, hold on. So this sweatshirt I've had since, what is it at? 91. Uh, my father gave it to me and it has lasted since 91. <laughs> I don't know who made it, but it's all still on here. The, the whole continent is still on here, just still hanging. So yeah, all right, so sacred sexuality. Um, I'm really going to be hot after this. Hold on. So I wanted to talk about the sacred sexuality of the ego and, and, and the soul. And really all of this takes place in our mind. Um, it is, the ego is often broken down in many philosophies as our masculine and soul as our feminine. Uh, ego needs structure. Um, it needs safety. Soul is the creative. It is the inspiration through which things come through. I always think everything is sex and that everything is sacred. And so even within us, just in us as human beings, we are a divine union that comes together. We are the walking embodiment of sacred sexuality. Now we've been conditioned to see sex as solely intercourse. That's, you know, penis goes into a vagina is the first thought and then any variation thereof of something penetrating something else. Um, sex is union. It's the coming together of, of usually two, um, and not opposing forces, but two elements coming together in union. That is what happens in, in us. And the reason why it's important to talk about is because so many people are on a spiritual path and a spiritual journey and they ignore or they think they want to ignore and kill the ego. They think they want to cause ego death and, and live without it. They think that we can, um, everybody's using the word bypass. I get annoyed using words that everyone else uses, but it's whatever. Um, we think that if we're, if we reach this space of being spiritually enlightened enough, 
that somehow we will be above the fray of what it means to be human. And that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Um, what happens when, when you embark on a path of healing or when you embark on a path to lift more from your soul's purpose, you learn to you learn to listen, you learn to not listen. You learn to acknowledge the ego, but not allow it to drive what you're doing. But it doesn't mean that ego doesn't happen. So for instance, if you think that you're going to be healed and so spiritually enlightened that you won't experience heartbreak or pain, that would be a misguided thought. If you think that you're going to be so enlightened that the troubles of the world will no longer disturb you or bother you, that's a, that's a bit of a problem. If you're walking as a human in this world and there's a, there's a difference between I am in this world. It's like that last statement of the prosperity plan. There's a difference between being in this world and acknowledging the pain and the suffering being in this world and saying that none of that exists absolutely in your life whatsoever. And you're just gonna, you're walking around with this fake joyous persona every day because you just don't acknowledge anything else. And, and there's a difference between walking in this world and being fully entrenched in your ego, pissed and bitter with, with your your, um, your joy and happiness constantly dependent on what someone else is doing and someone else's actions, right? So there's a balance in between there. There's a balance between, and that's the merging, that's the union, that's the sacred sexuality of mind, of, of the mind. That space between, no, I'm so enlightened and above it all that none of this is just, I, I am unaffected by any and all of it. No, 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 no. I, I create my own world and this is my bubble right here. This is my bubble right here. And, you know, everything that everybody's doing is affecting me and my life and I can't change a thing because this person did it to me and this person is holding me down and this person won't let me be great. And so because of all of that, I can't do what I want to do. There's a, there's a, there's a middle ground between all of that. And that's where we really come into union. That's when we merge. That's the sacredness of that union coming together. Why is this important? <laughs> because balance is always important. And as humans, we're always walking, always walking a, a line, always. It's, it's a not, it, there's no end to this. There's no end to this. There may be a time when, you know, you're walking the line and, and you, you dip further over into the side of ego and you're able to pull yourself back out quicker. There may be a time when there, there's an experience so profound and so painful that you dip over into ego and it takes longer to get back over to, 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 the, to the balance, to, to bring the soul into that. And that's okay. It's okay because it's part of the journey. This is, a, this is not a destination game that we're playing with being human. There's no point in which you reach this level where there's no more work to be done until you leave your body. There's always work to be done. And if we can accept that, just accept that piece, it would make our lives a lot easier. And then as we as we go along this process, and, and, and let's call it the, this process, we can stop saying that we're, you know, we're healing, we're healing, we're healing. Yes, that's a given. You're healing like you're breathing. Like you don't have to say, I've been on this healing journey for 10 years, because guess what? You're going to be on this healing journey for 40 so you don't have to keep calling it that. 
because I know a lot of people are healing, like perpetually healing and beginning to use that as their excuse for not living because they're healing. <laughs> You're always going to be healing. So just take that off the table. But if we can respect the fact that this is a constant journey that we're going to be on and that there's always going to be this merging and this union and the sacred sexuality of soul and spirit and coming apart and back again, soul and spirit. And there reaches a point where it's more together than it is apart. And that even if it's apart, it's lessened. But there's always going to be the search for that balance. We are living in a time when we're, we're seeking that balance. We don't know as a collective how to find it. And the reason it's important for, for people who, who have created their own bubble of reality and are so far above it all, you know, that they don't have to get involved in anything you know, and I'm just using this because I've seen it. I, this is not a, I've seen people who are like, I don't vote because, you know, I just, these systems don't affect me. You know, it just, this is that I create my life. This, this doesn't, this doesn't affect me. Yes. And still the systems still affect the collective. And if a person is so spiritually enlightened to understand that they that they are the creators, and I believe that wholeheartedly, I create my life. I am in co-creation with, with, with that divine force which, which gave me life. But I also understand that I'm part of a larger collective. It's not just me. I'm not, I'm not just here chilling by myself. And, and so while I can hold the space for, the, for, for the, the understanding and the realization that I create my existence, I can also simultaneously hold the space for understanding what's going on in the collective and what the collective is facing. It's, it's not, and either or, it is always a both and, it is not linear. And so to believe that you are so uh, like above the ego fray is, is actually not, that's actually not your soul speaking, that's all, that's your ego. Cause soul doesn't need to make any declarations about what it does, what it doesn't do. It, it doesn't need that because it's just, it just is and it's truth. Ego needs to make declarations about things, right? And that doesn't mean that it's not like, oh man, I shouldn't make declarations. Nah, look, we're gonna go back and forth and we're gonna be an ego. Like it's an important part of us. If there were no ego, there would be no sleeping, no fucking, there would be no wine and no chocolate cake, right? There would be none of those, those things that we do that bring some pleasure to our lives. Ego helps. It's important to have. So the point is not to like, first of all, we couldn't get rid of it if we tried. It's the part of us that's inherently human. But the point of it is not to allow the ego to take over, which is what has happened in this collective. The ego has taken over and people are not, and again, as the collective, are not living, speaking, breathing, from their soul, the soul part of them, even religious folks who are actually some of the most egotistical people out there because you can't be, that you have to have a certain amount of cojones and bravitas to believe, and whoever, to believe that your religion is the only religion. That's a lot of ego right there. Like you gotta, you gotta really be entrenched in your rightness to fully believe that your way is the only way. I want y'all to, to grasp that and understand that. How do you, 
and 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 really this entrenchment in ego really took hold when one belief system in particular decided to assert itself ego as the ruling power ego before that there wasn't as much living entrenched in the ego as there is now and we can see the effects of that and 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 the corruption of that so if you're a person who believes that your particular faith and belief system is the absolute only way for anyone to live a right life that's all ego because guess what you can't speak for something that succinctly that is beyond your human perception and there are very few people on this planet who have such a clear connection that they can honestly speak with that type of authority if at all so just keep in mind that if you claim to be some type of religious person and you claim to be living from this, this state of love and all of that, and you're also saying at the same time that your way is the only way, that you are not, you are not experiencing a sacred sexuality experience of your mind. <laughs> And so all of this is just about awareness, by the way. This is not about, this is not about judgment. This is not about judging others for where they are. This is not about judging the ego, right? Because judgment is, is another form of that. This is not about going out into the world, pointing fingers at people, go, oh, you're living from the ego. You need to get with your soul more. This is about awareness for yourself. To notice where you are in, in that spectrum on a day-to-day -day basis. Where are you flowing? How are you flowing? And for you to course correct. And as you do that, you will become uh, this kind of beacon for those who are ready to do the same, whatever that looks like for them. And in that way, we each begin to experience this, this sacred sexuality, this merging of soul and ego together in our own way, on our own path. Because there are over 7 billion paths on this rock. Again, we're each as individual as our fingerprints. And so even if we're on the same path, we might be in different vehicles. Even if we're on the same path and it looks like we're in the same vehicle, we're listening to different music. We got different snacks in our car. It's not exactly the same. And so we need to open, open and give space for people to be on that journey. And we need to open and give space for the collective to be on its journey. Because there's no forcing people to ride your path. It's not gonna happen. They have to come to their conclusions in their own mind or they have to stay entrenched where they are and live their life that way. And you continue the work that you're doing for yourself and maybe have conversations like this with others in a way that that gives them some awareness but nothing starts without just being aware i think that's it for today i think that's it i know some people are probably looking at this like oh she's gonna talk about sex no no because sex is easy to talk about and, and this is all the basis underneath that. I mean, the mechanics of sex are, is easy and there will be times when I'll get on here and talk about some things that are sexual, but the mechanics of sex are easy. It's really the stuff that's underneath the sex. That's the hard part. Like this soul and the ego thing. And maybe you can take some time and see how that might even apply 
to your sex life. <laughs> all right, that's it for today. Happy Sunday. I will see you all. I think I'm doing this 100 days of live streams is maybe what I'm doing, but I'll probably just continue it afterward. I don't even know what day I'm on right now, to be honest with you. No clue. I have to figure out how to keep track. All right. <clears throat> Swallowed the wrong way. Take care and have a great Sunday. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. <laughs> Bye.